If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Woohoo. Hello. Adam, Justin, and I have some fun introductory conversation. We start off by talking about poop. Uh, unique poop characteristics. We actually break down <laughs> the science. Lots of science coming from Adam on that one. I know, Adam. I uh, don't know Adam knew so much science about uh, poop. Uh, very interesting. We talk about the health IQ quiz and how we had, I don't know, 5,000 people take the quiz. <laughs> yeah, gajillion. To try to beat our score. Now, Health IQ is one of our sponsors Some of you now. Did. Um, if you go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump, enter your information, you'll get a free quote for uh, for life insurance, um, good prices for very fit people, and you can tell take the Health IQ quiz, try and beat my score. I got 188. We talk about Adam's headache and how cacao, I like saying that. Cacao. Doesn't it sound like like, a, like in Batman, like it's a like punch? Cacao. Yeah. 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 How cacao, Pow, one, of the, boom. one of the compounds in cacao may actually help him with his headache. Uh, we are also sponsored by Organifi, and they have a cacao powder that is amazing. If you go to OrganifiShop.com forward, oh no, no forward slash, just OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you get 20% off. We also talk about talk about morning wake up rituals. Uh, Justin's morning wood would be his. Yes. <laughs> I ritualize it. And Don't then, wake the sleeping bear. And then we talk about Oprah. What? She's one of our favorite- Running human. for president? She might be running for president. What? Don't do it, Against Oprah. The Rock? Against The, the Rock versus Oprah. And and uh, Trump. would be like Celebrity a death match. That's, we got to bring uh, that back, yeah. MTV. That Celebrity would, death match. We hope yes. nobody- We don't want anybody to die. No. Um, then we get into the questions. The first question was, in our experience, which mental characteristics tend to be the biggest roadblocks for people who are on the road to fitness? What mental characteristic stops people from getting to their fitness goals? The next question was, what do we feel is one of the best assessment tools for clients? Prime, duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all written out. Boom. Yeah. That's it. Right. Next question. If you had 100 pounds to lose, what are the top 10 immediate changes you would make. Good question. Good time of year to talk about this. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when someone needs to lose 100 pounds. This a lot of it's, a lo it's a lofty goal. A lot of our motivation behind what's going on at the YouTube channel right now. Definitely. Someone just like this. Yep. Slow progress. Move it slowly. Finally, the last question. Um, do we have any thoughts on how you could channel addictive tendencies into productive behaviors? For example. How is my smoking weed going to help me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you're a crack addict, you could turn that <laughs> you could, into you could be very yeah. productive. You could clean your house all the time. Oh, yeah, everybody's the most clean house. Share this, house. Share this episode yeah. with your friends. Uh. <laughs> also, in January, get a free Mind Pump T-shirt. These are limited edition. As I said before, we we got them from the finest unicorn fur that we could find yeah. on the I shaved it personally the peaks of the Himalayan mountains we brought them down had them blessed by Tibetan monks and mm -hmm. then we dipped them in the sweet sweet urine of the Sasquatch yeah. put that on it's got magic most of that is false but you do get a free t-shirt if you buy any Sasquatch maps urine. bundle any maps bundle and you'll get a free t-shirt including our super bundle which is one year of exercise programming if you're serious at all Look in the mirror right now. This is for serious people only. Are you serious about getting in shape? For I'm, reals? I'm looking. I'm not even playing anymore. Are you serious? The I'm, super bundle. Boy, you were coming with the hard closes today. The super the hard bundle. closes today. Yeah. Get, we're, we're guilting you into buying shit today. Get the super yeah. bundle, and that will take care of almost everything for you. Then you got to do it. To I get thought the I was ready, then I looked in the mirror. To get the program and to get the free t shirt that I talked about, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. Dude. Have you, did you go to the bathroom just now? No, why? After Justin? He did must. He, did he, he discuss? Did he crush it again? Dude, it's, it's. You know what it smells like? It smelled like that one burned your asshole, bro. I didn't even go to the bathroom, you dick. Oh, that wasn't you? No, I was uh, on the phone. Was that you, Mr. DeStefano? No, no, I didn't poop in there. That, oh, was, somebody, that, was that wasn't you, Doug. Doug. That was you a CrossFit dump. Uh, maybe Sal. We'll talk, or I mean, maybe uh, Taylor. We'll go talk to Taylor or the new guy that's in here right now. 
Could be him. Mm-hmm. But whoever it is, there, I there's know, a new phantom dumper. There's, I'm pretty certain his asshole's burning. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it has. A, don't like, you feel like, like that? Like some, chemically. You, well, don't you think that some like a like certain types of poops have distinct smells to it? And there's like a burn your butt. Like you know, there's a burn your butt. <laughs> like that one's smell. singed. Then yeah. there's a sulfuric sulfuric one. Right, right, you guys know right, that right. one, right? Eggy. Right? Then there's like the, <laughs> the egg. <laughs> then there's the, the eggy then, mess. Oh, and there's yeah, the. Sorry, um, Asian kitty litter smell. That's weird. <laughs> the what? Like, a little I, bit of tuna. When I worked on the, when I worked at that at the, after the, uh, Club Five O Five O Five, right? The east side, east side, where we had a lot of Vietnamese, a lot of Asian people in there. And when they, a lot of them would go in there and take a shit, it smelled like kitty litter. Well, I don't know what that was. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you actually put I, that together? I did. Uh, well, yeah, because it wasn't like it happened once, happened well, I guess twice. Different food. I was there know. for two and a half years, it's and there's combos. this distinct like kitty litter smell. Weird. I don't remember what kitty litter smells like. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you didn't I have a cat? Gross. No. I have had a cat. I always had cats. Is it like, up. is it a poop smell or is it distinctive? Like it's different? Well, it smells like uh, a litter box, you know? So it smells a little bit of poop, but then it smells Maybe like Maybe they're this. pooping and then sprinkling- Kitty litter? Yeah, just to kind of- <laughs> yeah, Just, just throw Just to be there. polite. Because yeah. kitty litter has like, it's designed to have like a, fr- an, a, a de- what is it called? Like a odorize, it doesn't when- uh, Deodorizes it? It's not somewhat. deodorized, but it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Dampens it? You know, where, so there's- it, it, Clumps? It, Oh no 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 no! It does that too though. Yeah, it clumps mm-hmm. it. it. It helps. It keeps this. It keeps it like a fright, but it has a very distinct smell. And so I don't know. And maybe I'm not this. I mean, the only time I that get sounds the- totally racist. I don't know. But I'm just saying that there's it, 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 there's <laughs> a not. D- there was a direct correlation <laughs> to, <Not at> all. <laughs> to this. So I, and I feel like so poops have these distinct smells. You know, yeah. they, I I notice it all the time. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I know your shits. Mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't know mine. Yeah, do you? Very chemically. I have chemicals. Oh, chemical yeah. one, <laughs> chemical dumper. Yeah, Mine's chemical. very meaty. It's oh, no, man. yours is very cheesy. No, it's meaty. God, very, yeah. Yeah, cheesy. It's, yeah, it's very cheesy. Yeah. It's got like a rotten I, cheese. I leave streaks. Like a rotten cheese to it. They, they are heavy. Sometimes. You do leave. Yeah, you, it does <laughs> look like heavy uh, loads. It does. When, heavy when, loads. When Justin leaves and he flushes the toilet, it looks like a car chase just happened down the <laughs> like just, it, all the way down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Dude, how many are you guys still getting uh screenshots of people's health IQ quiz tests? Bro. I'm still getting them every day. Yeah. I have super to, competitive. I have to tell group, huh? Health IQ that they don't pay us nearly enough money because I think out of all the sponsorships we've ever done, that was probably the greatest response we've ever had. Yeah. I mean, to this day, still today, I'm getting people comparing the, the test that they took on there. Yeah. yeah. Did they take the test down? Do you st- or can you still get No, to the, you can still do it. Because it's different. Someone someone messaged me and said there's- a- So we, if you go, to, you go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump, and then what you do is you uh, enter some information um, to get a quote, and then you can take this fitness quiz. And it's it really is, here's the fascinating thing about it, is because when I first saw this, I'm like, what are they going to ask me, right? Right. It's a legit quiz. No, yeah. it was tough. It's a legit quiz. And what they're what they're doing is they're testing your fitness knowledge and it's not easy questions. It's not like, you know, what you know, what exercise works your abs or anything like that. It's actually legit questions and then your score kind of helps I think with your quote because if you're if you've got real and the questions are very current for the most part. Is that how it works, Doug? Is that how it's all set up and it works? Yeah, that'd be one factor that would be in used for determining whether you get preferred rates. How do I know if I'm even getting a d- good deal? Like, what's the price range? What should I expect? Like, a guy my age, is it, does it matter? I've heard, like, if you're younger, you get a better deal. Yeah, if you're older, like, yeah, absolutely. if you're less likely to die, huh. you'll yeah. get a better deal. <laughs> right. So this is how it works. The younger you are, Makes the, sense. the less expensive it is. So if you're looking at, like, a term policy, now a term policy is for a specified term. It could be a 15-year 20 years. So you're covered for, for 30 years or whatever. Right, and that's exactly. It. So a lot of people, they have children, for example, and they figure their children are going to be around home for, say, 20 years. Mm-hmm. So they go out and get a 20 year term policy. So oh, that way, if I die, it takes care of the kids. Uh, and- yeah, and it's, okay, it's that's shocking cool. how many people who have children do not have a policy. Dude, this is this is this is for reals now. If you have young kids for for sure, think about it this way. If you have a dual income or especially if you're the sole, you know, the only breadwinner mm-hmm. and you're married and you're, you know, and you die, imagine what that could possibly do 
for the future of your kids. You could automatically throw Jesus them in poverty. Jesus Christ, bro. That's a hard sale. It's, <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> it's it's true. true. If you want, if you want, <laughs> Health IQ is not wow. paying us enough, bro, for that hard no, of a sale right there. Let me, Sal let me, comes let me, on with this like, listen, thick, listen here, me, parents. If you are a kid, if you got listen. kids and you have not signed up for health bro, insurance it's for and me. you die, yeah. if you you know, you, screw, you're leaving them shit. It's I mean, true. that's how I bought mine. If you want to so. screw your, your widow and your children, Die without a policy, it's, it's, <laughs> unless it's, you're independently wealthy. It's it's pretty much urgent, bro. On put, that think, level. think of it this way: if imagine, I mean, if I was a sell, if I was a health insurance sales guy, this is how I would sell, though. Oh. I mean, I would fucking make you feel. Yeah, like, and yeah. the funny you thing care, is, you hit kids, you right in the heart, right? Uh, and and then, the then funny the thing is, it's not expensive. So most people have car insurance, right? Yeah, because you might get into an accident. Right. There's one thing I can guarantee you. You will die at some point. Okay, <laughs> you might get into an accident. This is a, this is a fact. Yeah, was, okay, here's the ins- here's old uh, Doug insurance uh, side coming out uh, right uh, now. Yeah. So Sal was talking about that's how rad. he was spending what? How much a month for car insurance for a while there? Oh, six hundred bucks. But that's because I was a terrible. Maybe yeah, six hundred dollars a month. Most people, if they're within say a 30, 40 year old, will spend less than that a year. For life insurance. Oh, it's that cheap? It's that cheap. Yeah, and that's oh. like a, that's probably what a half a million dollar policy. Well, let me just tell you, I got some averages for life insurance off the internet here. So if you're a 30 year old woman, off the web, you have a million dollar policy. Guess how much it costs you a year? How much? Three hundred forty seven dollars. Yeah, it's cheap. It's oh wow! So you trade three hundred forty seven dollars for a year of a million dollar policy. Uh, basically thirty, but not even thirty bucks a month. Well, so, way- and this how this is how this works. So if you were to sign for this policy, pay your three hundred and forty seven dollars for the year, get hit by a bus, guess what your family gets? They get a million dollars. That's a really crappy bet for the insurance company. Of course, they're expecting you to live, right? Because right. they, they, what they're seeing is you're young, especially if you're fit and healthy. Here's a big one: like if you're really fit and healthy, you'll get a low price. If you're obese and you smoke and whatever, and you're sixty. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive. But if you're young, healthy, if you're fit, especially if you're fit and you've got good, you know, blood lipid levels and all that stuff, because they'll test that. Um, cause I got it. I have it. And, and I'll tell you what, think of it this way. If you're the average American, let's say you're earning, what's the average now in America? Was it like $60,000 a year or something like that you, you earn? So let's say you and your spouse combined earn a hundred grand a year the, together. You're both working and you're able to pay for your home. You've got your bills. And if you're like most Americans, you have a little bit left over every month to save. If you're smart, some people don't, but smart families do. You know, if you die, dude, that's terrible. The, yeah. I mean, the cost alone of all that stuff, but then you're gone. Now your spouse has to figure out what to do. So it's just peace of mind. All right, so tell me where the, where's the where's the website for people to go and go do this? Because I, I know they changed it. Before it was like a direct link right to no, the test. No, it's still, okay, so it's healthiq.com forward slash mind pump, and then you register for a quote, but then you can take the quiz. I scored 188. You scored 188, right? right. Justin, you haven't taken it yet. No. I'm going to hold out until he's I get scared, super bro. motivated. He's scared. I, I, I want to do some research. He's been studying. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ever since yeah. we did the test, he's been studying. I want to crush you guys. <laughs> he's been uh, studying. That's like my motivation. This is not an open book uh, test, too, by the way, bro. Oh. Not open. Really? Yeah, they time and, you. and it's time. They time you. Yeah. Well, I'm screwed. And yeah. I was going to mention <laughs> that they have looked at their quotes, and they're about 25% under industry standards, too. So. Oh, they're better. Cheaper by yeah. t- by twenty five percent. Oh, that helps by by up to twenty five percent. Wow, yeah. wow. So okay. it's going to be super cheap if you're in good health. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so do it. Get out there and save your children. You take care of your take, family. Take care if you, you love your if you Let's love your kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sal, <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> damn, you just listen to him like fucking hey, I mean, bro. Anybody who's got kids right now, they just got guilted into that shit right there. Get right to the heart right. as oh, they man. should be. Right, Doug. <laughs> 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 Dude, oh, did man. you guys? Dude, do I have a fucking massive headache. Crew. You have a headache still? Yeah, yes. Do you? Does anyone have any Advil? Or, Doug, do you have any Advil or Tylenol or anything laying around here? Nothing. Yeah. You know what you can do for your headache? What? That for some people, don't give of, me some of your bullshit stuff right now. Squeeze right here, you know, between yeah, yeah, your right. fingers. So, like really. Remember hard. when you used to fuck with people like I that? Like, oh, that. rub this, rub your head like this, and pelt, you know, like, like this do, doesn't work. This isn't working. Yeah. Put this in your mouth. Do you guys watch Modern <laughs> Modern Family? Yeah, uh, I used to. That's dude, a great the, show. The, yeah, the, the girl. You have the you have the older ditzy girl, and then the middle girl that's really smart, and her her battery is uh, dying on her her cell phone, and she's like, "Oh, you take the you can." That's just because the static energy has died down. She she says something smart, like rub it on, and you. she's like, rub it on your hair. She like, so the the fucking ditzy girl's oh, walking around no. rubbing her battery on her <laughs> on her head like crazy, <laughs> trying to get uh, it to charge. So for for headaches, you can try a, a vasoconstrictor like caffeine or three uh, chocolate theobromine. Mm. May actually help. So, but instead of buying a chocolate bar, do the the cacao powder. 
from Organifi. Oh, sh- yeah. So, so mix that in some with some coffee. Cal- like Excedrin has the acetaminophen caffeine. and caffeine. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so theobromine is chemi- chemically very similar to caffeine, and then you have caffeine. And both of them on the brain act as a vasoconstrictor, hmm. which is why um, some of the strongest headache medicine will have some kind of an NSAID in it, like ibuprofen or acetaminophen <laughs> or aspirin, and then they'll combine it with caffeine. I thought you were bullshitting with me. No, it's for real. So man. what do you think about like if I were to get a coffee right now and put sprinkle a little bit of our cacao in there? That's what I'm saying. Boom, boom. I mean, if you if you have a really bad fucking headache- oh, I gotta, It's getting like worse right now. Yeah, I would I recommend- I about to make a coffee run too. Yeah. Uh, You're like a girl. Dicks. You always have like girl stuff. <laughs> Girl that, was so, that was so yeah. sexist. Yeah, look at this. Racist so, to sexist. Yeah, so know, where we're, are we going? We're going to hit it all today. Oh too. Well, yeah. you, get, you, get, you get headaches, moody, cravings, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. All kinds of, why do you have a headache? What's going it's, on? It's just the moody side. I don't know yeah. why I have a headache. Did you drink enough water? got a lot going on. Uh, you know what? There. Since we've been what here. Did it, we got a lot, dude. We just got back, and I feel like there's a ton of shit, and Justin's yeah, taking off. healthy over there and stuff. Did you sleep good last night? Hmm. I did, but I felt like I wanted to keep sleeping. How did that sleep did you know? situation go, by the way? Dude, is he a he's, snorer or he's you big, snore? He's big spoon. I know you're a snorer. I'm not a snorer. I'm a snore. I snore when I'm sick, though, so I might have snored uh, a little bit. Did oh, I snore? No, I roomed no. with you once, and you did. No. It was cool because I snore too. Yeah. So if I'm yeah. sick, I'll snore. But if I'm not, if I'm not sick, I should be fine. No, okay? you, you, no, and you, you slept. You slept. You slept through my entire uh, photo shoot I did of you while you were sleeping. <laughs> it didn't wake you <laughs> up at all. Creepy bastard. I'm just yeah. saving that to me one yeah. time. Yeah. I was yeah. watching you while you were sleeping. You look so peaceful. <laughs> no, he's, he's a, so calm. He's a pretty good roommate, other than the fact that he does wake up on auto on fuck at six thirty o'clock and six thirty in the morning. Six thirty sleeping. He does that like like vampire. Like I'm up. Right. Hello, you know, and, so, and then as soon and as he, ready to party. as soon as he hears me wrestling around a little bit, he's like, right, pulls open the you know the, the shades. <laughs> hey, it's time a, to get up. I'm like, hey, bro, son of a bitch, we don't got to be there till like ten o'clock. Like, There's like no reason Band-Aid for you to be. Rip. Yeah, my yeah. eyes are. I'm like, Ugh. bro, I, this is what I do. I wake up in the morning, and because I've, I've roomed with other people, and a lot of people are like you. It's not just it's not just you, but I'll wake up. Yeah. Usually before, actually, Doug. Doug wakes yeah. up early. I'm too. like you. Yeah. Doug is the same way. He'll wake up early too, but I'll wake up. And you were still sleeping, so then I go to the bathroom and I do my 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 poop. I take my cold shower, and I get out and I I'm listening. I'm while I'm getting ready. I'm listening. Is he awake yet? Because I I want to be loud. I like to be loud in the morning. I don't like to be quiet <laughs> and soft. I like to fucking let's rock and roll. Yeah. So then I hear him like he like rolls over a little bit in bed, and I'm like, what up, dude? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Rips out, dude. And I'm the opposite. Like, and he's already talked about this. You're the guy who wakes up abruptly and just springs out of bed. I am the alarm goes off, snooze once or twice, kind of wipe the crust out of my eyes, yeah. maybe reach over to my phone, look at some, look at what I got going on today, lay in there, prop my head up on the bed a little bit, but still under the covers. Oh, my and God. Try, oh yeah, no, I'm a slow. I'm a little worried. I'm going to be rooming with Taylor going to uh, CES, and I know that guy. Oh, no. He's, he's got the long hair. Dude. He's like, you know, Mr. Snail. No, bro. He's up. a fuck. He's so easy. He'll, he'll be sucking his thumb still, sleeping like a little baby. Bro. Oh, yeah, no. He's He's, he'll sleep. He'll sleep. I'll through just anything. carry him on my back, and we'll we'll go barge he, He'll be blow drying his hair for an hour and a half. And yeah. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's all good. Sweet. No, my girl. So my girl is very much when we wake up in the morning because we both wake up about between five and five thirty because mm-hmm. we work out. Right. She is very much a slow riser. In fact. I have learned to not turn the lights on because if I turn the lights on anywhere near her, it hurts her. She's like a she's like a real vampire. Like she can't have any light on her. So it's the whole house is dark until probably an hour later. So she walks around in the dark for like a yeah. like a zombie. And I'm like moving around, and it's so not me because I like to turn the lights on right away. Well, I'm with her on that one. That's how I am too. I don't. You don't like like the the lights on? No. And even like how you rip open the blinds area. Like if I open the blinds at all, like I crack it open, let some of the light come in. (laughs) I like this slow adjustment period to get ready. Yeah, get ready for it, dude. Did you guys see? (gasps) You know what I just saw in the news? Uh, That what did they have? The Golden Globe Awards or something like that? I don't know. Recently, yeah. Yeah, Okay, so uh, Oprah hinted that she may be. Running for president. Oh, my. Hey, here it is, bro. I'm calling it. I knew it. The, you're going to have Oprah as the, the liberal. You're going to have The Rock as the conservative. They're going head to head. No, 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 no. I don't think. The, I think The Rock will, because he's done. I've done my research. Okay. So Dwayne Johnson. I has, just made that up about what he yeah. his political. Dwayne views, Johnson no has gone. Uh, he's actually campaigned or done stuff for both conservatives and liberals. I think oh he's libertarian maybe nah I well that would be cool I think yeah I think independent um, Oprah probably Democrat and then you've got Trump who's the you know the 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 Republican 
you know what's happening right now? What's happening is the political parties are, besides the Republicans, are freaking out because they were so guaranteed to win the presidency with Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a single like polling like anything no doubt about it bro when the polls were coming out like the where they were not the polls but like the like the statistics and whatever she had like a 99% chance like nobody even and then he won so they're like what can we throw at this to win another celebrity another celebrity and Oprah is a fucking beast a powerhouse that would be an epic yeah he uh, might be going down she's bro she's got a good chance I don't know man if Oprah's listening I if Oprah's listening <laughs> I hey, first of all hey there Oprah oh my yeah, Oprah's listening. Like, I'm so glad you like, threw that in there yeah, like go that go ahead and come on our show hey in case you're listening Oprah this yeah. is my advice hey, to you hey listen <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. it. They will run. They, any, anytime you run for office, they run you through the mud. They will find shit on you. It will destroy. It destroys oh, everything. I would never want to go through I tell that. you what, though. I mean, she's pretty, she's she's pretty gangster, man. She's, she's resilient. Gangster, yeah. Bro, she's been associated with so many celebrities. and so many, I guarantee you they'll find pictures of her hanging out with Harry Weinstein and their best friends. And <laughs> If that's not already popping up, oh they'll, they will find stuff on her. I know. There's you such assholes Don't fuck there. with that machine, dude. And yeah. she's like loved, right? She's super loved by everybody. Yeah, but I think I think that's inevitable for everyone, right? So I think yeah. the difference now and what Even we see- Even if it's out of context, they'll is, just throw it out there. I mean, when you have enough people and we see this with our, with our audience, right? Like it, it, we've we've built a. And by no means am I comparing us to Oprah. Yeah, and this, you like, are. It's yeah, okay. Sal did it already, so <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just gonna keep riding. She's with listening. It. Yeah, so, she's listening. Let me tell yeah. you. No, but when you have someone, especially of her level, there is a cult like following of ra rabid fans, right? That would just do anything for her. Of and course. It, it doesn't mean if you showed her doing anything bad. And now some of them would jump ship and be like, oh, I can't believe she did that. I don't like her anymore. But for the most part, she has like solidified her audience and her fans that even if the worst stuff come out, they're more likely to stick by her than some fucking politician that most people didn't know until well, they got into the limelight. Bro, you're so looking that's at the difference. You're, this is the future. Yeah. Let's look at Trump. This Trump is, is an example yeah. of that. Trump, they've. I mean, now, here's Trump came out. They said Trump came out and said grab the grab a girl by her pussy, yeah, and no. people still still stood by him. So that's because He's he had like, enough ah. celebrity power because of what he did on social media to do that. And I mean, you give someone like Oprah. Oprah, and, is, Oprah is Jesus of social media, and here's bro. The th and here's the thing. like, I could see how another celebrity running you could talk shit about. Uh, in fact, like like Dwayne Johnson, he'll get hit because he, what has he shown other than the fact that he's built uh, a business based off of his celebrity? Oprah is a legit businesswoman. She has created... She's the wealthiest woman, I think, in the world, if I'm not mistaken. She or, was for the longest time. Wow. But she's built... like She's a real deal entrepreneur, which is Trump's strength. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that he's built businesses. Right. That would be a battle. It's fighting. For the, yeah, yeah. Fighting fire. Bro, fire. that would be a battle for That's the ages. That's why I think she'd have a, a, a chance. For and sure. she would have all of fucking Hollywood and whatever support. Oh, of course. Yeah. All it, of the celebrities. Rally which hard. might actually hurt nowadays. It's interesting. Nowadays, like having celebrities support you, yeah. not necessarily a good thing because they're not looking too good right now. Yeah. But we'll we'll see what happens, yeah, man. No, that's mm. interesting. What else? We watched that. You and I watched um, Corey Corey Feldman's uh, interview and story while we were gone. This oh, it was too. an extension of it. Yeah, it was the old one. Yeah. You know, he talks about all the pedophilia oh, the and pedophil shit. Oh, oh god, it's ew. so terrible. You guys watch that? Oh, yeah. That's that's depressing. It's so terrible. Well, I haven't heard any of those interviews. Like I know I've seen like little bits of things, but I haven't watched an actual full interview. And we watched a full interview of it. Yeah. He talks about it like it's this like culture. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Not like, like one like person. Norm there. Like it's a thing. Yeah, that people. That's so gross. Yeah, oh, gross. there's the richest women right there. She's number five. In she's America. in America. She's worth three billion dollars. Wow, that is impressive. You want to know what's crazy? If you so, I think the last presidential election, I think it caught. I think the total cost for running those campaigns I, both I don't know was, the, a, was over a billion. dollars. I don't know the three girls above her. Yeah, yeah, I don't know them either. I don't know who they were. How do we not know who they are? <clears throat> but uh, if you're if you're uh, you know, you figure if you're worth three billion dollars, you could probably finance a quite a bit of, of your own of your campaign. Own campaign yeah. But would you want to? No. You imagine that you tackle all that. You're this incredibly successful woman. You've you got know all this money. Why crazy, would you want to do that? Yeah, Where's it goes? Is what's it crazy to me? Right. So if you if you invest that much of it, you only what do they make? Like a half a like a president makes a half a million dollars a year. Doesn't it make you really wonder? Like God. 
Why What's is What's the this? motivation? Right. Why is yeah. it you're going to get brought? I mean, it's just power. Yeah. Yep. You're, yeah, in, all you're in the inner circle, bro. Yeah. You want to be. You get to see all the secrets. You get in the know. You yeah, get all they, the they, secrets. They hand bro. you all the files. All yeah. the secrets. Bro, you want to be the shit. Illuminati. You want, <laughs> Illuminati always, <laughs> always amounts to that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll see the future. And what's going to be really crazy is in the future. Right now, it's these. Old She's school. worth thirty three billion. No, no, no. That's Alice Walton from the Walton family. She's oh yeah from the no. Walton that's not that's yeah. not Oprah. That's no, no. I know that. I, obviously, that's not Oprah. It's a white <laughs> she looks woman. Nothing like it's Oprah. a white woman with huh? fucking red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like that's not Oprah. I'm like, yeah, yeah no Listen, shit. I don't, hold on, I don't I need know. you Let to me educate you. So yeah. she's the heir, sixty year old fucking no. white lady. <laughs> <laughs> so that other woman was the heir. Your Oprah is not my Oprah. She was the heir to the founder of Walmart. That first woman, Alice Walton. Oh, uh, that doesn't count. Then. Yeah, yeah. This <clears throat> person here, last name Mars. What is she heir to the Mars? She candy? owns Mars. Oh, okay. <laughs> the planet. Yeah. <laughs> she owns Mars. Wow, getting yeah. some of that red. No, dirt. Oprah's self-made. That's the, that's all I have to say. That's a yes. self-made yeah, which, billionaire. That's what's gay. That's she's what's awesome. She, she, is many, a, she is a badass. You know dude. how many yeah. millionaires I, she's created? Oh, look at there's an article. Yeah, like is her. Oprah running yeah. for president? Yeah. Wow. I would. She's got to consider it. I, I I think this is a real thing. I would hate to run against Oprah. How do you how do you tear her down? She's so yeah. awesome. You feel like a piece of shit if you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, dude. She's so awesome. I don't dude. want. I don't want her to either. Because I don't. I know. Want her. I don't want her to either. I don't yeah, want. Yeah. The I scrutiny like her right and all that I shit. Like all her the right mud now. throwing. Make me not like yeah, her. I don't I think. want I'll like. vote. I'll vote for anybody if their economics makes sense. That's, you know, that's I'm with you. I like one. Oprah. That's, I like her a lot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's a, if she comes out and talks about you know freaking silly economic bullshit, then I can't vote for her. Sorry, I don't care how much I like you. But I do like you. Oh, yeah. Come on my show. Enough of the politics. Come on my right? show. Yeah, let's <laughs> move on. Yeah, that's yeah, that's your, your thing. Since you're already listening, yeah. Oprah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever. We'll just say we love you, Oprah. Right? <laughs> All right. Since you, you listen to us. Bring on the patriotic bird. Woo! being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Godzilla11112. In your experience, which mental characteristics tend to be the biggest roadblocks on the road to fitness success? Ooh. Easy. I can think of one real, real fast. It's uh, people who want results now and who go after it super hard, super fast, out the gates. Hmm. I can I would, pretty much guarantee you those people will fail. I would challenge that because if in your experience, mental characters tend to be the biggest, well, biggest, plural, right here. So I, I would say um, people like... Um, Self doubt, so just not believing that they they could look like that, not believing that I can get in shape, not believing that you know a lot of people subscribe to this. I'm you know I just I'm ge I'm genetically not blessed, and I was so was, my my mom is fat, my dad is fat, my grandparents are fat. I'm just destined to be a fat person. Yeah. So I think self doubt uh, it has to be up there too. A lot of well, people, I, yeah, and I think along those lines too, it's it's sort of depending too much on somebody else to motivate, you know, or like, so, like external factors to dictate whether or not like their success is happening or, you know, like I, I didn't make it and so-and-so is going to be upset with me and it, don't really internalize it. Like this is my process. This is my journey. Yeah. See, as it, I'm thinking back to, you know, training clients and when people would come to me to hire me, first off, if you're already going to hire a trainer, you've already taken a pretty big step. But when someone would come to hire me and they would tell me, I don't think my body can change. I don't think this can happen. That was very easy for me to work with because I could, I could, they could, I could very much walk them through the process, right. show them small, you know, points of yeah, progress. But again, that's, but that, that's I, you, that's them coming to you and you walk. I agree with you that I, but that's, I'm saying that's a huge one because I know I've, even the people that came to me, I've had tons of those. How many people think that in their head and they never even take the chance to? Why would they even waste their money? Sure, you know sure. what I'm saying? So that's why I but think, I mean, it's think the, about those the biggest. But think about those people that you would get as a client who would join your gym, who overweight and, you know, whatever. And they come in and they're like, all right, all right I want to get in shape. I need to lose weight. I need 30 pounds in a month. I'm going to do this Zuma class. I'm going to do this, whatever, this workout. And they come in gung ho. And I can almost guarantee you. 
that they almost always stop. They burn out or they right. stop. Yeah. I, could, they, I used to have gone too hard. Dude, yeah. I would have these boot camp classes or these workout group. I didn't do very much group training, but when I did, they were these, I call them boot camp, but they were a little different. And these people would come in and I could spot them a mile away. And for sure, I'm like, this person's going to fucking stop mm -hmm. because they're so gung-ho and they want this shit to happen like yesterday mm -hmm. it's just not going to work out that mentality is a very difficult that's a such a bad roadblock and it's tough because it's that's what gets stressed so much is that like the motivation you have to hype up you know i, I gotta do this this is the, the time this is the year and i gotta accelerate the results and there's all this urgency and inevitably you know that's gonna that that's something that's gonna disappear mm -hmm. and so what's the plan after that what's the plan I, after your five to it, ten pounds you I know? also think that a lot of people um, do see some good results based off of whatever it is they're following and then they get they identify with it and they get stuck there forever and a lot of people see a plateau or they get to, to this point and I'll be the first one to admit I was somebody like this I had like a a look or and that I could, or a shape that I could get into that was like, this would be considered me in shape. And at that point in my life, it was the best shape I could ever get in in my life. And a lot of that was because I identified with a way of training, a way of eating, and that was my go to, right? It was, I'm either on the wagon or off the wagon. I'm off the wagon, I'm eating like shit, I'm not really training consistently, whatever. Now I'm on the wagon, I'm doing it, I'm doing the things that work for me. This works for me. So I go back to doing all these things that that have showed me the most results in the past. And so I'm just in this vicious cycle. I think a lot of people struggle with this. And a lot of uh, there's I don't think there's a lot of people that have never been in better shape of their life. Right. I think everybody at one point has made a conscious effort to be in better shape, whether it be restricting calories or watching what they're eating or doing some sort of exercise. But whatever it is they've done, they tend to attach themselves to whatever showed them the most results for them. And then they just do, do this vicious cycle and they keep doing that same thing. They're doing it over and over and over. And then they realize they've been doing it for months on and it's like they're not seeing any more results. And then life happens and they just get, you know, I can always spot the people who um, at one point were in shape from running. I can always spot them because you see them running down the road and they have terrible biomechanics obviously not fit yeah. to run but at some point in their life running made them lose weight so they're like oh i need to lose weight I'm right start Th running. these are the people i'm talking about and right? i watched them don't run, you I'm agree like, oh, there's a lot of that dude there is there is a lot of that you know what's another big one is the the martyr mentality is a big big uh yeah, mental right. roadblock and it's it tends to be different for men and for women but everybody has it like i've had the male you know the, the men who will tell me nah man i don't got time to work out i got to focus on work I work too much. I got to, you know, focus on my business or the mom who's like, you know, I don't have any time because I just want to focus. I just do everything for my kids and it's all about my kids. And they think that taking time to take care of their fitness is taking time away from other things. And then they do this comparison where they compare the two. So they think, okay, I can take time away from my kids for my, myself but my kids are so much more important than me. They're a priority. So I'm not going to take that time away because they have this false paradigm where they're going to be a martyr and where it's it's this trade-off when in reality, of course you can overdo it, but in reality, moderate exercise doesn't take time away. It gives you time. It gives you more quality time. I'll tell you something right now. If you're that, it's an investment, if, dude. If you have that martyr investment. mentality... Um, you're probably not as good of a parent or not as good at work as you could be just because you feel like shit and because you're not fit and because you're not healthy or because you feel stressed out or because you feel uh, a little bit of uh, resentment. You know how many people, I, how many times you guys get clients who kind of resented their jobs or their families because I, I can't do anything for myself and they resent it. And it's like, all you got to do is take a little bit of time and watch what happens. And you start to you know trade like well, like what your uncle says trade dimes for quarters right you know what I mean you put a dime in you get a quarter back and uh, that has to be one of the biggest ones that uh, you know that I see yeah I think um, yeah I, so self doubt subscribing overdoing to, it, overdoing oh, it right right overdoing it so too much intensity martyr, too fast martyr mart martyr mentality yeah those are those are some big ones I'm sure we're missing another one too because there's a there's a lot of the characteristics yeah. that tend to be roadblocks this one isn't people. necessarily a mental characteristic. But it is a roadblock, and it's uh, a lack of um, a vision and a plan. 
And so what I mean by that is if I, if I have a goal of something, if I say to myself, I want to climb the top of that mountain and that's all I know. And I think to myself, I'm going to go up to that base of that mountain. I'm just going to start climbing and I don't have a plan. It can make it very difficult. I'm not prepared for what may happen. I don't know what to do next. I don't have the preparation to know that I need to stop at this point to, you know, get my food here, my water, whatever. Same thing for fitness. So I think a lot, especially right now in January, a lot of people enter into the fitness realm. They end up going to a gym and they're like, I need to lose weight. And all they know, their whole plan is I'm just going to work out and move and sweat and burn calories. Or it's just based off of what's worked for them in the past, yeah. right? Like we've mentioned. It's, it, that's a very common thing to, to go along those lines of like not having a plan. It's like you're gonna, your default is going to be what worked for you and you're like 20 right. or 18, right. you know? But it's a, it just it's doesn't a, translate now. And it's a simple plan. It's like I'm just going to keep moving. I'm just going to move twice, twice a week and I'm just going to. Well, so many people don't know that they don't know. Yeah. They think they they think they know because, like I said, at one point, everyone's been in better shape than they're probably sitting at right now, right? Unless you just happen to be in the best shape of your life at this moment of listening to this podcast. Most people can say, oh, I was in great shape when I did this. Like, imagine if if I identified with a men's physique guy and identified with that being as the best shape of my life, which it was. I was in the best shape of my life competing. And what if I identified with what I had to do? to be there as like the way and you forgot all the ramping up and right all that. right and it was just you know doing all the doing that whole process of carrying my food around and training seven days a week and, the, and i'm either on it or off of it i'm either have the time to make that commitment to be that guy or i don't have that time to uh, people do that that's obviously an extreme analogy right. but like sal saying with the running i mean i see this every day right now where i live near a park there's a lot of people that go by jogging and i always look at the people that are they're running and it's I, I always see them I'm like, fuck, dude, you should not be running. You just tell by their posture and the way they're running. Like, dude, I guarantee that guy or girl goes home later that night and their joints are aching like crazy. And it's like, why why would you even choose it? Like, just walk right now. You know what I'm saying? Go for a longer walk or restrict from something or pick up some weights. But that's because, you know, people that have done that in the past, they knew that they lost the weight the fastest by just getting out there and running right away. It, Start sprinting. It, it helps a lot to look at your goal and then to break it up and to see what your plan is and to do it in a very slow, methodical fashion. So if you're if someone's not working out and they decide they want to get fit, then maybe for the first three weeks they're only exercising once a week and they're focusing on a particular, you know, goal or a particular metric. And then the next three weeks they Ramp it up, ramp it up a little bit. In the next three weeks, they add a little bit of meat or whatever. Actually, we're doing something similar on our YouTube channel where we put out uh, this this workout, this thirty day workout. And if you follow it, you'll see how it's a progress. It's a plan, but it's it's progressive. And if you don't have that plan, at some point, you know, three months later, it's usually about two or three months. That's about. The, the drop off right isn't it right people will join gyms in January usually around average yeah it's yeah, yeah. no it's yeah, there's there's statistics on this the average person there's actually this is uh the the stuff to support like Planet Fitness and and companies like this 24 Hour Fitness uh, for their EFT model the average person signs up for a gym membership and uses it for three months and stops using it but continues to pay for seven months after that. So the, the the gyms are getting a, a hold on a second. Let's do the math here. I'm going to show you guys something interesting. Let's say the average cost of a of a monthly you know membership at one of these gyms is what would be the average 24 fitness right now? 30, 25? Yeah, say 30. Okay, so 30, and they're paying for 10 months, right? Because right. they pay for three and use it. Yeah. But then seven, they don't use it. Right. So they know they're going to collect three hundred dollars from this person. Right. Now they're going to divide that by how many months they know the person uses it. And now they're figuring about a hundred bucks a month is the value of that client in terms of how much they're going to use the equipment, how much they're going to use the facility right, right. and their crowd. Right. And that's how they do their numbers. Absolutely. Right there. Absolutely. That's how they figure out their monthly dues. And if they're advertising and pulling from a part of the population that they know is, is because I guarantee you planet fitness numbers are worse. They're, no, they are because what they, what they did was they, they found the people that are, that will pay for a while and that are less it. are less knowledgeable about fitness and then this is not to not if you're using planet fitness i'm not saying you're not as smart as somebody else it's just the fact that you are going to get somebody they're ad actively advertising if, to that crowd yes if you're so you're if you're a golds right if you're golds gym you are more likely to get somebody who is passionate about lifting weights who reads all the magazines and reads all the articles well, they, and all they blogs. probably use the gym more no it's a but fucking fact yeah, it's absolutely. a fact it's absolutely. not this isn't like me speculating it's a fact that if you get going to golds 
you're more likely to find somebody who is that is very, very passionate about lifting weights. You go into Planet Fitness, you're more likely to see the average Jane or Joe. And the average Jane or Joe that doesn't know any better, doesn't know exactly what they should be doing, has no idea. And that's and the, and then they take that and that struggle with staying consistent and fall off like these numbers that we're talking about. Then we feed them pizza once a month too. <laughs> it's like we're just increasing the odds of them not seeing seeing the results. And, of and the membership is so cheap because the statistics show the cheaper the membership, the longer a person is likely to keep it exactly. while they're not using it right, because oh, it's only nine dollars. It's only seventeen dollars. Oh, up? those bastards. Right. Yeah. Next question is from Image Writer. What do you guys feel is your best assessment tool for clients? Yeah, mm, this like, has changed over yeah. the years. I mean, as, when I first became a trainer, what we looked at was um, real basic. We did posture assessment. So someone just standing there and we'd look for common posture deviations. Then we would do a squat, a pushing movement, a pulling movement. And that's pretty much it. That was the basic one. As I got into it more, mm-hmm. it got more complicated and, and more. And, and, you know, it's funny. Posture will tell you a lot about somebody, but it won't tell you, as, <laughs> uh, it won't tell you nearly as much as movement. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I noticed is sometimes you see somebody with posture that may not look textbook, but then you have the move and they've got great biomechanics yeah, the when they're doing exercise. The problem I have with that statement, though, it's like saying that if you're racing a car, it's, you know, better to have a stick shift than an automatic. But if you're just learning how to drive a car, telling somebody that the best assessment or your brand new trainer, telling them that the best assessment tool is uh, movement and walking. Cause I a hundred percent agree. Like I'm, I agree with you. Like that's to me, uh, I not only do the squat assessment and do our prime pro assessment that we have on there, but then I also make somebody walk and pay attention to their movement and they, as they do exercises, stuff like that. Now, a lot of that is because I have evolved as a trainer. I have learned to get, a, I have learned, uh, way more than what I knew when I first started. So mm. that's the only problem I have with that statement that you're saying right now, because you know the for and you well, guys all well, know. Well, they're asking our best assessment tools. Well, so. yeah, this is one of those things that I've like. As my quest as a trainer has interested me the most, right? Uh, like NASM coming out with their squat assessment, you know, it was really helpful. It was revolutionary. It was, it was. Think about before that. Right. What yeah. did we have before that? Not, not a whole lot. So, you know, from that, and then I went into more FMS and, you know, what that protocol consisted of. And just like now they're getting into more, um, you know, multi-planar type movement assessments, which was cool. And then I'm um, using very specific exercises that you can see what the performance and the response was, you know, from the joints. And then now with FRC, how, how we're seeing that evolve into really seeing if you can even articulate the joint like it's supposed to, right. which makes a lot of fucking sense to me. Mm-hmm. And which is the whole entire reason why I tried to invent this product to be able to capture uh, you know, what your body could actually generate force wise, because if you don't have connectivity and you don't have the abilities that your joints are supposed to have, where the fuck, what the fuck are we building on top of? Right. So yeah. I, I just, I feel it's like a shaky this, foundation. Yeah. This is just like one of those things that gets kind of breezed over, but I feel is, is been the basis of like me deciding whether or not I'm current and my training skills are up to date. Well, this is why I'm really proud of how we put together Maps Prime Pro was because we took a lot of our knowledge. We know that, you know, the movement like Sal was saying is a deal, but then we also know that we're providing this tool for, you know, potentially thousands of people all over the world on, okay, you're about to start working out. What is a good assessment? How do you assess yourself before you just start piling on all these exercises onto or, and, and on top of these deviations. So I think the prime pro assessment is fucking badass. I mean, I think it's incredible for people that are just kind of learning about movement in the body. I think it's a, and I think it's an advanced enough that even somebody who's a professional can utilize this tool to get a, a right. really good idea in the well, direction. In first introduction when we just did prime, right? That's those three very simple foundational basic type of movement patterns that we can see it it tells us a ton you know right away right. so it's, it's that quick like i can see i can okay here's kind of the area uh that we're going to need to focus on now let's hyper focus i look now, at it like this like prime is a fucking badass assessment tool for all trainers and all average people that were to buy any of our programs this i i believe if you own any maps program you should own prime to come 
to complement it. Just because bottom line is we all have imbalances. We all have deviations. This is designed to help the average person who's going through our program understand more about their own body and their mechanics. Now, if you're a, a professional or you're just an, a person too who wants to seek more in-depth knowledge and you want to break down the movement in every single joint, there's Prime Pro for you. Mm, That's yeah. why we created Prime Pro. So Between those two tools, I mean... Uh, of course, I'm biased because we created it, but we created it based off of all these other great programs in AFSM, FRC, which you're talking about. I mean, all, all of us. A, it's a shared amount of knowledge, right? Yeah, it, we it, took every all, all, together, the, all the information yeah. and knowledge that we've all gained over these years from all these different other great people. So, again, we're standing yeah, we're on the standing shoulder. standing on giants. Right, 100%. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. this is something we're forgetting to mention that's really basic. Because um, I'm thinking, as you guys are talking, I'm thinking to myself, like, what part of the assessment could I do? Could I never do without? And I totally forgot about the, the first, what's the very first thing you do when you assess a client? The very first thing you do is you ask them questions, mm. which is also part of the assessment. Yeah. And that is the one thing I could do, I could never do without. I have to be able to ask them particular questions, very basic ones like, <clears throat> what are your goals? That's fucking basic. What is your fitness history? Do you have any injuries or any pain? That is a super, super basic part of assessment, but you would be so surprised how many trainers don't ask questions. Do you know how many times I've had clients come to me and be like, oh, I worked with this other trainer, and when I showed up, they just took me through a workout. Yeah. They didn't even they ask them. tell you what to do. They, don't, oh, they might ask what your goals are. That's about, what are your goals? Cool, it. let's go for a workout. Which is always weight loss, muscle building, yeah, right. you know, That's a good general point, health, so. right? Yeah. You got to ask questions. That's like the, the absolute first thing you do, and- Here's the thing, uh, the bottom, I mean, and I hate to say this, but if you're, if you're a trainer and you're doing an assessment on a potentially, potential new client, the assessment serves two roles. One is to give you some information on, your, on this potential client so you could show them things that uh, are good for them. And two, all of this is so that, that you can build value and they can hire you. Because the truth is, the hard truth is, the assessment process never stops. I never in my life am I, have oh, trained somebody. You're constantly asking for feedback. You're always assessing them. Always. So, And the reason why I say that is uh, I remember having trainers who would treat the assessment like, like they had to gather all the information, like all the information they possibly could, get every little bit of information. They ended up bombarding the client with too much shit. They weren't able to tie it to how they could help the client. The client never hired them, or if they did – that assessment, that initial freaking super long, ridiculous detailed assessment process was worthless in about a week or two because the client's body changed right. as they started exercising. So the reality is uh, yeah, assessment- liquid. You have to constantly get feedback. I, uh, you know, When I'm working myself out, as I'm warming up, as I'm priming, I am mentally assessing my body, noticing, you know, oh, my hip feels a little tight in this direction or my ankle- it seems like I have more mobility here or less mobility, or I feel like I can't connect to abduction, you know, as I'm going through this light priming set of squats or whatever. That is the information that's really going to benefit you because it's real time. It's right before you do your exercises. So, you know, if you're if you're assessing yourself or using an assessment tool, recommend you do it before every single workout. Dude, prime bundle. That's where it's at. Yep. Next question is from Jenny Dinner Bell. If you had 100 pounds to lose, what are the top 10 immediate changes you would make? I love this question. Yep, yep. I love this question. I don't know if I've... We'll see together. Maybe we can put together 10 of them. I have my number one on a few. But um, I, got a f I got a few things that I, I tell people. I think a, a person... Like where would who, you start someone, right? <clears throat> I would start somebody, okay? Because they're 100 pounds overweight. That's, that's, all, that's very obese. The first thing I would start them to do is to track in an app like Fat Secret or My Fitness Pal for a week or two. And this is because... And not to change anything, to eat their normal patterns. Because even if you don't have a trainer, this will help you make connections with your own habits and patterns. I don't know how many people I have told or shared this with or had them do, and they go... Well, I didn't realize I was eating that much. I didn't realize I was doing that much of that. I didn't realize I wasn't getting enough of that. They don't realize it until you help them that. So I think the first step is to track your food for a week or two mm. and be diligent about that. And don't try and make a bunch of changes and be totally different because you want to get an idea of your habits and the way you've been feeding your body. That's the first one for so me. So how many, let me ask you guys this because right as I'm thinking about this question, I'm 
trying to envision what the client looks like. And if they're a hundred pounds overweight, they look like they're a hundred pounds overweight. Well, there's a, well, what I mean is, uh, like not just on their hips, not their literally, li- yeah, not literally, <laughs> but, um, there's a different, uh, mental shift between the average client that wants to lose like 20, 30 pounds. And then the 100 pound overweight client, I, I've, I haven't worked with a ton cause it's not it's actually not a large po- percentage of the population, but I've worked with, I probably a few, at least I can think of, three clients who've lost a hundred pounds that I've worked with yeah, because it's not super common. At least, uh, at least it ha- wasn't for me. Oh wow. I've actually, I've dealt with a lot. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well you, you were connected. Weren't you, didn't you at one point yeah, work like with the hospital across uh, the, yeah, center? I did. did they I, send you guys. Yeah. That's why I say I've done a lot. So I've had a lot of clients that I've were a few from there too. coming over there. We've done, we, they would do the surgery. We, I ran, I used to, I think two or three years in a row, I ran a biggest loser challenge. So like mm-hmm. when the biggest loser was a big thing and I was trying to tell people that it's a, a shitty way to, to try and die and get ready and like this is if you want to do a biggest loser challenge. This I remember is we did that with the body bug. And right. Yeah. We right. Had, we had. So sort of I have. I have whole thing with that. I've dealt with quite a few of them, and you're right. There is a. It's, diff- a, it's different, right? Different men- well, uh, mentality. Well, what, what you're, or whatever. You're, I think as a, a good trainer is mentally preparing somebody that's that overweight that listen, this 100 percent, and the story is the same to the 20 pound person that needs to lose weight or whatever like that, but. I think it's just you really got to nail that down with someone who's that overweight that, listen, this is going to take some time. This is not – in fact, we don't want it all to come off like Biggest Loser. I always used to use Biggest Loser as an example for them because most people that are over 100 pounds of weight know what Biggest Loser is and they've seen that before. And and no matter what they say but in the back of their mind, they all kind of want the same thing. You know, They're all like – fuck, I saw Biggest Loser and this guy lost 100 pounds over the yeah. six-week course with that. And you're just like, no, you don't want to do so that. So we had we had one client who came in who want, who had to lose over 100 and I think 130 pounds. And the doctor told him he had to lose 30 pounds before he could get the surgery. A lot of people don't know that. That many times when people go in to get gastric bypass, they're, they're, they won't operate on them until they lose some weight uh, on their own. And I think that serves two functions. You know, one, it's obviously probably unsafe if you're super, super overweight to operate on them. So it's just too much of a risk. And the second reason is psychologically, I think they want to see that the person can do some of it on their own because the the psychological issues that follow. You think that they much care that loss, much? I think they're starting to. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do psychological now. They do. They'll have it. them meet with like a psychologist. They'll have them take classes. There's a whole process now, but. This gentleman comes in and had to lose 30 pounds before he could get the surgery. And this was a very, uh, it was a pretty incredible success story because he opted out of the surgery and actually lost all the weight without getting the surgery because of the the whole process. But uh, the success that I've had with people in this situation always starts off so slow. Like the first thing I tell somebody in this situation is literally, and it depends on the person, but literally be like, okay, step one, all you all just, just drink water. Don't drink anything but water. That alone, for some of these people, I remember this guy, you know, doing that was a challenge because he didn't drink water. All he drank was soda. Right. That's all he had. Like, like two liters That's of it. soda. All so we're like, long. all, yeah, yeah all. I've had clients. Yeah, like that. step one, don't do anything else. You're coming in here to work out with us, but there wasn't much we could do with him because he was so big. And it was like, just drink water. And the dude lost like, I, th- I think it was like 12 or 15 pounds right away just from cutting out yeah. just from drinking water. So along those lines which I agree this is why I think the tracking for the first week is so important because I too will take and and we can use water because I think water is a great one to start and it's so true most people that have that, that are overweight are drinking a lot of calories so that makes a huge difference just to switch them over from all the sugar drinks that they are drinking over to water but maybe this person is already drinking good amount of water this is how I individualize the tip that you're giving right now is I look at that week and I pick one thing, one thing only that that we're lacking in. Maybe it's not enough fiber. Maybe it's way too much sugar. Maybe it's too much drinks, uh, sugar drinks and not enough water. Maybe it's whatever it may be, but we will find, trust me, there's going to be plenty of things to find that is wrong with just that. pick one and pick one thing and we're gonna we're gonna nail that down and we're gonna master that yeah. we're gonna create good habits of you and you I might have to some some people that are that overweight I have to normally scale like I've dude I've trained people that drink six to nine cokes a day 
Yep. I don't know if you guys ever, I've had yep, that. I've yep. had that. Yep. You don't take someone who's drinking six to nine Cokes a day and say, here's your meal and plan. Eat Taco for Bell my, for every meal. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I've had here's like your that. meal it's plan like, that ah. my computer at 24 Hour Fitness printed out for it. Follow that and yeah. let's go. Yeah, you know, dude. no. That person, it's like, okay, you're drinking six to nine I a just day. just threw that shit away. Let's man. cut Those it down to plans. three. Yeah. You know, mm. let's cut it down to two. Let's cut it down to one. Let's go every other day. Let's see what it's like when you only do it once a week. And, and psychologically speaking, it's very powerful because the person, yes. they accomplish something. You need something. to give these, you need to give somebody, you need to give them a win. when you have a massive goal, okay? And it's just like, this is life, man. When you have a fucking massive goal, I want to be a million day, millionaire one day. I want to lose a hundred pounds, whatever your fucking goal is, taking it in small steps so you, you start to get these victories along the way versus always focusing on the end goal which is a, is a long oh process. Oh my God, when you're trying to lose 100 pounds, I mean, you lose 10 pounds and you work hard toward it and you, all you're looking at is at, at that number 100. Yeah. You want to give up. Yeah, you especially know? when you know how hard it was for you to Dude, get to that I, 10. Dude, I've had clients, I literally had a lady and I didn't believe, I couldn't believe what, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought for sure this is no way this is true, but it was very true. She did not drink water ever, never. She woke up in the morning and had a Coke and that's what she had all day long. Now, of course, she's getting water through the Coke. So, yeah, you can survive that way. But it was so shocking to me that she never drank water to the point where, like you're saying, I started having her replace one Coke at a time with water. Right. And she would gag. She would she would message me and be like, I can't do this. It's too, dis it's too gross. And I remember thinking, like, water is gross? It's water. What, what do you yeah. mean it's gross? Yeah. I've had some crazy... I had, I had uh, 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 another person, uh, 100 pound overweight, who every meal... And there were several, more than three, so they'd eat like five or six times a day. Every meal was a fast food meal from a fast food restaurant. Every right. single meal. Right. Every single one. Yeah. It's So the, the, the steps you take have got to be small. The one thing I like that now that I look back, I didn't realize that this is why it was successful, but we've talked about this since we've been on the show, is rather than taking things away is adding Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yes. So and I and now that I think back, it was always very successful when I did it, but it was almost on accident. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is uh, I'd say, you know, um, instead of telling them like, okay, you're eating three fast food meals a day, and instead of saying, you know, don't eat fast food out of you know one of those meals or something like that, I would just say I have to eat broccoli. With yeah, it. I would say yeah. eat two cups of broccoli a day and then continue doing what you're doing. And that seems to be a more successful approach than the takeaway. So I, I so used to, I used to go like this with someone with this big of a goal. I would go. You know, movement, uh, you know, strength, um, nutrition, uh, adding something. And I would kind of rotate through them. So like this this time, the thing I'm talking to this person, right? The, all I'm talking about is just the water thing like you're saying. And then let's say we've been training for three, four weeks and they've lost a couple pounds. Maybe they didn't even lose anything, but they've got the habit now of drinking water instead of all these sugar drinks. Then I look again and I'm going like, okay, well, we're not getting enough fiber. So it's like that I'm just driving home the fiber. And then I move over to mobility. Obviously, this person's probably going to have some mobility issues or have something going on. And I give them a, a goal, which is, hey, you know, three times a day when you see the sticker. I used to do, I used to do this a lot with clients. I used to give these stickers out. And I think I've talked about this on the show before. And I'd have them stick a sticker throughout their house. I'd give them like four stickers and each sticker represented something different. Scratch and, and sniff. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I would put it throughout the house. Maybe one's on the refrigerator, one of them. And I'd let them pick wherever. I said, just places that you walk sporadically through the day. And when you see this sticker, I want you to do this thing. Whatever the task was, whatever I was focusing on, whether that be drinking more water, getting more fiber in the diet, doing a mobility stretch real quick. And you start to create these new habits and patterns that I know ultimately are benefiting the big goal, which is lose 100 pounds. Because I guarantee... This person wasn't doing mobility exercises, wasn't drinking enough water, wasn't getting enough fiber, eating too much sugar. So instead of bombarding with them all the things that they were doing wrong, let's just pick one thing like every week or two and we just keep hammering those homes and we keep building on it. And it's amazing. You start to get some momentum. So, you know, you talk about the 10 immediate changes. I wouldn't do 10 immediate changes. Yeah, I might pick 10 That's things. too many. I yeah. might pick 10 things that this person probably needs to work on and I'd give them one at a time. And yeah. master those. Sometimes it's just sleep, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's something I had to do with a client. It's just like I, I'm not going to do anything. A lot of times it's sleep. A lot of times it's you sad. cannot. That was mind blowing to me. You can't. Um, uh, I really can't uh, stress enough how much you need to appreciate what state this person is in. I, I remember I had one uh, individual who was losing a lot of weight, and 
he would uh, come in and talk to me about how bad his digestion was. And one workout, uh, I saw him outside waiting for me because I was with a client. And the dude is eating Jack in the Box. So he came in and I said, hey, I said, shout out to Jack in the Box tacos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of those as a kid. The Colossus Burger. Uh, you yeah. heard that thing? Yeah. <laughs> this is fucking we're not ridiculous. Even, we're not even sponsored by them. Uh, and so uh, he comes in and it was, it was relatively early in our, our training relationship. And I said to him, I said, you know, I said, I, I, I bet you a lot of your digestive issues may be coming from the fast food that you're eating. And the look on his face, he was shocked. Like that, like he didn't even understand that that could possibly be influencing his digestion. Really? Yeah. He looked at me. He's like, what? Yeah. You really think it? Yeah. I said, yeah, I think that might be it. Why don't you try? And it's like, at that moment, I realized like, you, we take for granted how much, you know, we know and how much we, uh, what we think is obvious. Right. But people don't even realize. So these little tiny all things. The time, oh, yeah. it's crazy. All the time. I have to check myself. Next question is from Freaky Jake. Hey, that's, oh, ju- hey. that's Justin's buddy. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> He's freaky. Any thoughts on channeling addictive tendencies into productive behaviors? Have you ever dealt with this in your lives? Oh, That's yeah. The story of my life. This is, um, <laughs> this is like a page out of Lewis, Howe, Lewis Howe's books, the, the book that he just released. The, the masks. Uh, yeah, the masks, right? You really, uh, impl- uh, you really put an exclamation part on that book. <laughs> <laughs> on this book. Uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is I think m- more people are, um, there's not a lot of people that realize that uh, we all kind of do this, right? We tend to, gravitate towards what's working for us and a lot of times it is the things that we are most addicted to and a lot of times the reason why we're addicted to them is because we're interested in it. well no it's like it's it's given us some sort of return yeah. whether it be relief from something and you're addicted to drugs and it gives you you're you're no longer present and so you're that way that's giving you that and so they're you're drawn to that or you know, maybe you're a workaholic and that's provided a living for you and the toys and the things that you want. So a lot of times the things that uh, that we're really addicted to have, already do this. I think the challenge more is is recognizing and seeing it, right? Yeah, it's, it's funny because the question is like channeling addictive tendencies into productive behaviors. The, the very act of being addicted to a behavior means it no longer really serves you and becomes productive. Right, it has a negative connotation to it. Yeah, so like you can work hard, but you can also be addicted to work. Both of them yield you different results. You may be successful monetarily with both of them, but being addicted to work work probably means... It takes away from well, this is, other parts. Remember of your when life. we we uh, I think the first time I talked I talked about well, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Yeah. This is a lot of what that means. You know, a lot of yeah. times the things that we are best at also can be the things that hurt us the most, and that's right into this. It's just about what you're willing to compromise. Because if you want to be, you know, I'm the greatest basketball player of all time. You know, of course, I'm going to have addictive behavior, and it's going to be unbalanced on you know certain levels, and certain things are going to suffer as a result, and. You know, you could you could put that into any situation and you're just going to have to identify that like, OK, is this feeding what my ultimate vision and my ultimate goal is or is it not, you know, contributing towards that? See, it's I th- negative. I think there's a lot of confusion, though, around the word uh, addicted. I think people think addicted is the same thing as driven or right. focused. No, addiction literally means it is uh, detrimental like to you your life. You can't do anything about it. There is a mental uh, yeah. you know, issue that's going on here. It is not the same as being focused. Because you can be very focused. You can be super focused on a goal and bust your ass and people around you. But people will replace that word all the time. Yeah. Addicted. They might say like, oh, you're just addicted to you know what you're doing. And you may even joke around and be like, I'm addicted to it. But being addicted, uh, it doesn't feel good. I don't think it's a like... Yeah. Wow, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. It's it's like you're compelled to do it, even though you dislike it. I don't think. I mean, someone who's a real like addicted, uh, you know, really addicted to something, it's taken quite. A, you know, it's taken away from the life. So the question about well, let, so let's talk about your hypomania a little bit. Yeah. So let's talk about your hypomania and how uh, how you use that or you channel that to be more successful, um, and how you do not allow it to create uh, addictive habits. Yeah. So, um, I definitely go through periods where I, which Sal also believes that I am too, right? Yeah. You probably <laughs> are recently read that self-diagnosed. <laughs> I, I, you know, actually I had a doctor client tell me that anyway. So, uh, I'll go through periods where I'm just elevated. I'm very motivated. I'm very into things and I'll find something and I'll just dive into it. 
Um, and in the past, see, here's the funny thing. I don't. I think it might tip into some addictive uh, behaviors if my life is fucked. Like if I'm in a bad situation in my life, mm. then mm. I can see it turning and in, developing into more of that addictive, damaging, uh, you know, type of behavior. Uh, definitely, you know, towards the end of my marriage when I was, and a lot of that is just unhappy. because you're you're not wanting to be present. You're wanting to disconnect because where being present means you have to deal with this current issue in your life that probably is painful, is challenging. That's right. So then you lean to these things, you channel that energy, which that's where this can be bad. So I think that's a great point. Yeah, because if my life is in a certain you know position in a, in a good space, I could still be extremely focused, but it's not the same feeling um i mean I, I mean towards the end of my marriage you know we were, we were we were both very unhappy and i would get addicted to exercise and work and i just that's all i would do um and a lot of it was the escape a lot of it was that this was my my way of not being present in a lot of my problems and it, it was definitely overdoing it i could definitely look back and be like wow there was no need for you to do that much um because it was taken away from your kids it was taken away from your family Today, I have, I think, less of a likelihood to do that. Um, but if you're a focused individual and you find that... Well, think about this, Sal. What about a, a good example to me is our trips that we take. You know, and if you think you are and then you think potentially I am too, like what we do when we go on these trips where we take off would be, con- would be totally unhealthy to be doing that all the time. 100%. Right. We, we, for three days, we literally don't leave a building or a house or wherever we're at, and we work for probably 18 hours a day. That but is, but we have fun the whole time, di- right? It's, I mean, it's, weird. well, it's fun. It's the addictive properties. Yeah, we, I guess you're right, we, yeah. there, that's what I'm saying. This is how I could give him an example of how we channel something that could be, that could become addictive and unhealthy because we are so productive and we are so having, we are having fun. It is right. the rush is fun while we're in it, but let's be honest, how many of you guys oh, would have successful relationships with no, your family and your kids up, yeah. if we were doing that all the time? Right. So we take something that is a strength of ours, this ability to hyper focus on something and totally, I mean, I don't even call my girl a lot of times. A lot of times I look down on my phone, like, Oh fuck. I, it's I already, yeah, I haven't even called her today yeah. or, or anything like that. And so I, that would be a very unhealthy way for me to maintain our relationship if I yeah. treated her like that on a basis. Now, the reason why I love my girl to death, we've been together for a long time. She knows that and she allows that to happen for us to go there, do your thing. I know you guys are extremely productive, but I guarantee she wouldn't put up with that shit if it was seven days a week every day <laughs> yeah. where I was like, honey, we're so productive. I'm killing it. Look at all the money we're making. And that was my excuse. But that would be me more addicted to that that habit versus taking that and using it to an advantage, but then also being very aware of it that it can become well, something And there, there is a personality trait that some people have, and I have a little bit of this, I think, where I can get into something and I can become very focused and enjoy it until it gets kind of boring, and then I move on to the next thing. People used to joke with me when I was a kid, and they'd be like, oh, what are you into now? Because I'd get really into something, and I'd get into it, and I'd learn everything about it, and that's all I would talk about. And then that would last anywhere between a month to a year or two years, and then I'd move on to the next thing. I don't think there's anything in, inherently wrong with that. And if you you can you can definitely utilize that if you have that quality, because a lot of people have that quality. A lot of people will really get into something until they get bored with it and move to the next thing. Don't feel guilty. I think it's cool because you learn a lot of shit, like move to something else. If it's fitness, for example, how awesome would that be if you get really into you know powerlifting for a year, and then the next year you're like, ooh, I'm really going to get into yoga. And then, ooh, I'm really going to get into, you know, uh, obstacle course racing. I mean, that's a kind of, that sounds fun if you ask me. But I think a lot of times people feel bad about doing that because then they feel like they're moving from one thing to the next. And it's, you know, I, I get addicted and then I lose it and I go to the well, next I think, thing. Well, I think the, the idea is to channel your strengths, the things you're passionate about, the things that you do well, channel those and, and, and foster those. But then also be aware your greatest strength is normally your greatest weakness. So if that is a strength of yours and you're killing it, so that may have some perspective detach yourself a little bit and evaluate your life and be like, okay, well, this is good for this part of my life, but is it serving me in other parts of my life? And if it's not, and it's potentially doing damage, then it's probably becoming addictive. And at that point, it is not something that you want to maintain. You want to find balance that way. Can so. you guys think of times in your lives when you were close to addicted to something? Oh, 100%. Mm. I, that's why this, is, this, converse, this conversation around the work thing is, mm-hmm. I used to do this. This was my MO with... Um, 
girls that I would date in the past is when I was over the relationship where I knew that we weren't meant to be or whatever, you know, my passive aggressive way of ending the relationship would be to bury it into one of my strengths, which would be fucking work. Like I could just, I would, and then I would just start to leave that relationship. And instead of breaking it off, I would just bury myself into my work and it was really easy to justify that. And then it would end up causing problems in the relationship. And then we would obviously end eventually, but it was an unhealthy way for me to approach that. I'm sure it, it drug us both through a lot more harm, more stress in my life. And it was unhealthy for me to be doing that. But that's an example of me taking something and, and then become an addictive property, which for me was work and using it to not handle another issue. I think we all somewhat share that in common. And I think that's why we have put reserves, you know, in place because of that, because we all can see those tendencies and, and see how that sort of, <laughs> you know, like between our relationships and how we're dealing with each other. And, and it, it, it's so helpful to have a partner that recognizes that that's, you know, a weakness and a strength and that, you know, you just have to keep that conversation going to know whether I'm stretching it too far or too hard uh, and whether I should kind of back off a bit and then, mm. you know, just undulate it a bit more. I was, uh, for years on and off, I was addicted to exercise, 100%. I didn't miss a workout and give a fuck what was going on. It could be anything. If I had to be somewhere at 6 a.m., oh, I'd, I'd it, wake up at 3 a.m. This is one of the things you still, I still see you struggle with. I still see you, and I've, I know I've teased you about it before, where we are somewhere and you really want to get your workout in. And it's like, fuck bro, it just doesn't fit in the schedule today. Yeah. Can we just take a day off? And I can see the way you, I can see your wheels spinning and see it like you dealing with it, but handling it. You I, handle it now where before I yeah, bet now it was. I, now I take time off and it's really not a problem. Um, but in the past it was like, it was going to happen. If I had to wake up literally at 3 a.m. to make it happen, I would make it happen. I never missed it. Didn't matter if, if I was getting married. Didn't matter if it was a, Family function didn't matter if I was out of if I was on a vacation somewhere I would totally plan it around the gyms or I'd bring bands with me, and it was a very healthy uh, excuse me unhealthy relationship with exercise and it's just it's a compulsion you know that's that's where I feel like the, the addictive you know the, hmm. where addiction comes from you feel like you're comp you have to do it versus I want to do this now had you asked me I'd be like no I want to do this mm -hmm. but no it was. I, uh, I, 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 doing it was better than not doing it in the sense that when I didn't do it, I'd have withdrawal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't work out today. What's going on? So yeah, that was a, that was one of my experiences. So check this out. If you go to YouTube, go to mind pump TV, we have a workout every single day being posted this entire month. And it's a workout program that you can follow from beginning to end. We progress you through the entire month. It's completely free. Just go to mind pump TV Click on the videos, watch them, subscribe to the channel, and set up your notifications so you can see when we post up a new workout. Don't forget, all month long, too, we're giving out a free shirt for any of those bundles. So if you pick up that Prime Pro bundle or the Butt bundle, you guys get a free t-shirt this month. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>